Hey Sotopians, it's Jess here and welcome to another episode from our Cloth Nappy Sew Along. In today's episode, I'll be showing you two ways to sew pull covers. The first way is using FOE, which is fold over elastic. And the second way is using the turn and top stitch method. So let's get started. So I get asked a lot what patterns I recommend for covers and there's quite a few that you can use. So I'll talk about the free one that I found which you guys may have already heard about and that is the Arfi's free cover and it comes in a small like a newborn size and then it comes in a small to large and this is probably the size that you're going to want to start with unless you have a very small baby. I'm using the small to large today. I have made covers before, which you'll see on your screen now, using the newborn size from the Arfi's free cover with the umbilical cord snap at the front. Now I found these ones to be a lot smaller than I anticipated and I ended up giving quite a few of them to my daughters to use for their little dolls. So if you're wanting doll nappies, they're definitely good for that. But if you're wanting a nappy cover that's going to fit over a lot of layers and that's going to fit your baby for quite a while, you're going to want to go with a bigger size cover. So this pattern was made specifically to be used as a cover, not as a pocket or not as a fitted or anything like that. This is a cover. This is supposed to go over a lot of absorbent layers. However, if you are after a very specific fit, then you could just use the pattern that you use to make your fitted nappy. For example, I have made the Arfi's Ruffled Leg Fitted, which I did in my blog, which you can find in the description below. And in that blog, I also use the pure nappiness. Now, when I make a cover for either one of these fitteds, which are my nighttime nappies, I use the pattern to make the cover as well because it is the right fit, the right shape, and you're going to get a really good result. So I'm actually going to use both the patterns today and I'm going to show you the fit difference in both of those. The other two different things that I'm going to do today is I'm going to use snaps and I'm going to use Velcro on the different covers so that you can see what they look like in the end result as well. Okay, so I'll explain what I'm doing at this point. So this is using the fitted nappy template. And I've decided to use Velcro for this one because I don't like the idea of snaps digging into the baby's belly when this is folded back up for the bigger size. So I've just transferred marks on to the pool where I want to put my Velcro. The next step that I need to do is to sew down my micro fleece, right sides together with the pull. So remember your right side of your pull is the matte side. So we want the shiny side to be hidden on the inside of the nappy. And so I'm gonna use my wonder clips and I'm gonna go around the whole thing with wonder clips. Then I'm going to sew my cover. I'll do my opening across the top here. It's easier to flip it out. Um, but before I turn it right side out, I'm going to sew my leg elastics in using the zigzag technique and my elastic across the back. Then I'm going to turn it right side out and I'm going to top stitch it at that point. Then I'm going to put my Velcro on. So this method is a little bit different than if I was to be doing it with snaps. Alrighty, so now we're up to doing the elastic and I'm just going to transfer onto the pattern piece where the elastics are meant to go. So texture. Just be really selective about where you actually put your markings because 
you don't want to see that through the other side when you're finished. So I'll just actually put mine inside the seam allowance. Now in regards to how long your elastics should actually be, I like to make mine about half the length of the distance that I'm sewing. And also in regards to where to sew them onto, typically you want to sew them onto the piece that's going to be on the outside of the nappy. So in this case, it's the pull. Now I know we've talked a little bit about pull actually rolling outwards regardless um, of where you sew your elastics, but because we're going to be top stitching that, that's not gonna be a problem in the end anyway. All right, so now a very important thing to do before you cut your leg elastics, or before you mark the length that you need to stop at, is that you want to exercise your elastics. So you want them to lose their elasticity now. You don't want them to relax later on. So I like to give them a really good exercise, like this, and then I like to mark just very softly my distance, and then I'll actually fold that in half. Then I'm going to mark full length of the elastic and I'm going to mark the halfway length. So what I'm actually going to do is the first leg elastic is going to be up to that first mark and then I'll cut that off once I've finished and then I'm going to do the same with the second piece. The reason I don't cut first is because it's very very fiddly and hard to sew. Alright so now what we want to do is we want to select zigzag um, and select your three step if you have a three step zigzag. If you just have a regular zigzag, that's fine too. So, on my machine, that is number six, and I want it to be about length of two, and I like mine to be about four, three and a half millimeters wide. All right. So, actually, your first step too, when you're sewing down the first bit. So you might not be able to actually get a secure back, sti back stitch with um, the first bit. So you might want to actually just put it down to your normal stitch. Just to secure it down, just to tack it down. And then I'll pop it back up to my three step zigzag. And then just let it do a couple of zigzags first. And then I'm going to really give that a nice firm pull. So remember you're pulling the elastic, not the fabric. And just keeping an eye out for that line because you want that line to reach the other one. heaps need it just needs to be inside that seam allowance. Okay, and then go back down to my normal stitch. And I'm going to back stitch that. Okay. I'm going to cut that at the mark. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. Start by back stitching it in place. Four, three, back three, that's my method. And then I'm going to go up to my three step zigzag, to my like, two millimeters, my width is 3.5. And start my zigzag and start stretching. leg elastics done. I'll just pop my markings on my back piece which 
is about there and about there as you can see I'm super accurate exercise my elastic and distance from there to there I only want to go about halfway so again we go Marking at the halfway mark because that is distance that we want to sew. Alright, so let's tack it in place. Just ignore that purple line, that first one. Is our elastics done? All right. All right. Before we turn a top stitch, we just want to cut the excess off on all of our curved bits. Just so we don't have any bulk when we turn it out. Okay, so I left an opening at the front and I'm going to turn that out through there. Okay, so I've turned it out and I've just started closing over the hole that I left open by top stitching. And now I'm about to approach the first leg elastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop where I can feel the elastic and then I'm going to sew out until my needle is just past it and then I'm going to pull the elastic and the fabric making sure that the micro fleece is rolling inside not outside and then I'm going to while pulling it this nice and taut I'm going to top stitch alongside being very careful not to catch that elastic all right let's do it I can see my elastic now, so I'm just going to stop there. And I'm going to sew it out. Then I'm going to pull this as nice and smooth and flat. And it will flatten out as you have two hands free, so don't stress too much about when the foot goes down because you can adjust it after the foot's down. And now I can actually just see, you might not be able to see it on camera, but I can actually see a ditch there. So I want to essentially sew in that ditch. Being very careful not to catch my elastic. Because of course it won't bounce back properly if you catch the elastic. And just keep adjusting as you go. elastic inside too, make sure it hasn't rolled. So you end up with a big old mess inside. Other end, and I'm 
I'm just going to, with my foot, turn it and I'm going to sew across that to my edge and then I'm going to keep top stitching. Just make sure that all of that is out properly, I'm not rolling inside. When you get around the corners and it starts bunching, just lift your foot up and then just smooth that fabric around. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect top stitching. So I'm going to sew this down over the markings that I've made. When I've sewn that down, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew the other piece over the markings that were made. So now I'm going to sew down the other length of the hook part of the Velcro, the soft part of the Velcro over the markings of the one that I just did on the outside because remember this is my fold down flat nappy to make it smaller. So we want some velcro on the inside too. Okay so I've cut my pieces now. So I have two hook pieces for my wing and one loop. So that's only going to go on one side because obviously they're going to cross over. And then also what I've got for the inside here, and you'll see that on the nappy piece, on the pattern piece, is that I'm going to actually stick this here so that when you pop them in the wash, you'll actually pop your hook with your loop so that it doesn't catch on anything in the wash. Okay, so I want to sew this down about there so it's got that much overhang and I'll just sew straight over the top of that Oh, and I have just run out of bobbin as I got to that last little corner there. <laughs> How's that? I'll be right back when I've refilled my bobbin. All right. I had one pre-filled, so that was good. All right, so I'll pop that against there to keep it out of my way. Actually, I'm going to cut that back because there's a little bit of overhang there. All right, so I'm gonna fold this wing out of the way while I sew down the loop for my other wing, so that will fold there. All right, so. Cut these threads and that is my first nappy cover done this out the way so I can show you 
all of its wonderful features. Alrighty, so this is it at its full size. So we would obviously put this one down first. And then this one would go over the top of that. Okay. And if we're wanting to do it for a smaller size, oh, that velcro is very tight. I'll fold that down. So remember, this is the Arfi's uh, ruffled leg fitted, um, and I'm using it as a cover. So it's got that really cool feature that it has the fold down flat to do it for a smaller baby. And then that will come over there. And we have ourselves a smaller cover. So just to recap what I've just done, I've used the Arfi's ruffled leg fitted nappy pattern to do a cover. So I've turned and top stitched. I've used pull on the outside, micro fleece on the inside. So first of all, I sewed it right sides together. And then I did my leg elastics and my back elastic by zigzagging it inside the seam allowance across the raw edge. Then I've turned it right side out and I've top stitched all the way around. We've stretched our elastic out and top stitched across there to encase that elastic. And then of course we finished by putting our Velcro on. So now I'm going to do it the other way and that is using the exact same pattern piece to do an FOE fold over elastic cover. So the first step is to pop all of my snaps on reinforcing that. Then I'm going to sew on my fold over elastic and I'll show you how I do that. where we'll actually be pulling when we sew on our fold over elastic. So between that mark and that mark, we will be pulling that much elastic. So the elastic that would come to there gets pulled all the way to there. And I'll show you how that's done. Alrighty, so on to the scary part. Actually, it's not that scary, but I get a lot of you telling me that you're really afraid to sew fold over elastic. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So first of all, you want to cut the edge of your elastic diagonally. And you want to find somewhere a little bit inconspicuous to start with. So I'm going to start mine a little bit off center. So the biggest tips I can give you before I start is you want to do a three step zigzag and you do not want to pull your elastic anywhere outside of the elastic marking. So you want that all to be nice and smooth and flat until you get to the legs. And I will show you what to do there. So let's start on this corner here. And you just wanna make sure that the raw edge of your pull is in that fold line. Then you just fold that over and you'll start sewing. And I'm not going to worry about back stitching. Okay, so I want to go a bit wider with my zigzag. And this is going to be covered, this first bit will be covered with the end of the elastic as I come around. So I have a little bit of time to play around with the width. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've come up to my elastic mark and so I've got my two elastic marks, the start and the end. So what I want to do is, without stretching, I want to mark how long that will go to and then I'm going to put one to click in there and then I'm going to find the halfway mark and the halfway mark is where that will stretch to okay so I'll show you again without pulling it just laying it flat I want to find the furthermost point I want to fold that in half and then I will mark the halfway mark and that halfway mark will be where that stretches to So we want to pull that, lay that down inside, wrap it in nice and snug and we want to hold that firm and pull at the back as we go. Go nice and slow, make sure that it's catching all of that fabric inside the elastic. machine. approaching the back now where we will need to pull I'll just keep going flat for now until I get to that mark that I made with my pink pen and again just stop on the elastic mark and we will find the other pen mark and we want to mark that fold that halfway so that it's in line with the other elastic mark mark our halfway point that is how much we want to stretch our elastic and we pull the back and we keep going Okay, 
So this is the second FOE cover that I've done. Um, and I did this using the FOE cover template, which is a free app, this one, of course. And so I've done this one with snaps across the top. It's a Velcro and I've done snaps for the crotch rise. So basically what I'm going to do, you can see how I've reinforced it inside. So basically what I'm gonna do with the other one that I cut out in the solid green, is that I'm going to use a micro fleece, the stay dry layer for the lining. And I'm going to do this one turn and top stitch so that you can see the second way that you can do the FOE cover um, without using FOE. So we can do this, the cover, as a turned and top stitch. So again, what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to do my crotch rise snaps because this one does need crotch rise snaps, which will go here. Um, and then I'm going to sew it right sides together with a stay dry layer. I'm going to do my elastics and I'm going to show you the second way that we can do leg elastics without doing the zigzag stitch. So there is a second way that we can do leg elastics and then I'm going to turn it out and I'm going to top stitch it then I'm going to put Velcro on because I want this one to have a Velcro closure um, across the wings instead of snaps. Okay, so first step that we need to do with this is putting our snaps in, our crotch rise snaps. And to do that, we need to reinforce this area here. So I've cut out an extra piece of pull. And to stop this from slipping and sliding around, I actually use my glue stick. So I'll just pop some glue on, and I do it on the shiny side. And I'll just, not too much. And this will just wash out when you wash this. So don't stress about having glue inside your nappy. And then just sort of eyeball it. And I want it to go in there. And then I will place my piece over the top. It's not quite right. I need to move that up a bit. And it's very easy just to reposition it. Pop my piece over, just make sure that lines up. And then I will get my pen and I'm going to mark where the snaps need to go. Okay, so I avoid sewing pull side down. I don't like the way that the pull slips and slides around um, with the feed dogs. So I'm just going to do my micro fleece down and my pull side up. I'll just start there so I can leave a bit of an opening. So this pattern doesn't actually come with the markings for the elastics. I've just had to sort of eyeball where I want my elastics to go. So it's sort of from inside the curve to inside the curve on both legs and I've matched them up. And then across the back, um, just inside of where those elastics sit. So that's typically the configuration of where your elastics will go. Now this method is very, very simple. So obviously we need to exercise our elastics before we sew with them. So I'll do that first. So it's the same in terms of measuring it that we did with the last method. And so we want to find the distance from point A to point B and then we want to halve that. So we'll find our halfway mark and I'm going to pop a wonder click in there. And that's the halfway mark. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tack that down there just with a straight stitch and then I'm going to tack the other side and then I will cut it. So very easy. And 
and you want to do it to the pull side because the pull side is your outside layer. You don't want to sew your elastics on the inside layer. Just secure it in a few back stitches back and forth. And then I'll just cut a little bit extra just for something to hold on to. And then, without stretching it, you literally just sew it down on the next spot. Right and the beauty of doing this technique is that it's easier for you to replace your elastics later on, which a lot of people find they will need to do because their elastics die before their pull does. So if you're wanting to replace these, it's as simple as cutting a little incision inside your nappy and pulling these out and replacing them. We'll do that with the other side. So before I turn it out, I'm actually going to trim the edges to get rid of all the excess so that it's nice and neat for top stitching. So I just want to find my elastic, the first elastic point which is there. And we're going to do a very similar thing to what we did with our last turn and top stitch nappy. Remembering we zigzagged that one down along the length of the, the leg elastic. This one we did not, we just tacked this one in. So we just want to work our way out to create our casing. So with this one, you've got to be very sure that your elastic is not loose in there. So you want to make sure that's nice and firm so you can actually see that the elastic is in there. And then you stitch in the ditch. And just make sure, being very careful to get around those snaps. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move my needle so I'm going to lift my, lift my needle I'm going to move my needle as far left as possible and I'm just going to reposition it very carefully so that I can navigate around that snap without catching the elastic So for this nappy, we're only putting our Velcro on the outside, not on the inside, because this is not a fold down nappy. This is a crotch rise nappy. So if we wanna make it smaller, we obviously snap our snaps down.
and that is our last nappy sewn for this video. So this one here, of course, is using the traditional nappy cover pattern, um, which is the free Arfis one, which I will link in the description below. And this one has the snap down crotch rise. And I decided instead of doing snaps across here to do Velcro because you can do either. And this is sort of how it comes together. And it should fit your baby from a newborn age. It does snap down quite small. Now, now remember I said to you that you can get the newborn size and that is incredibly small. So unless you are actually going to be putting it on a very, very, very small baby, I just would skip that all together and go for this one, which is the small to large. This one's going to last you for quite a while. See how tiny that is? And I'm going to show you side by side with the other one that I did with the fold over elastic in this pattern. So this is the same pattern using fold over elastic and using snaps across the top. So I'll snap it down to its smallest size. And I actually put an extra snap on one wing with a female face siding up so that you can actually get it even tighter across the tummy. And so that is what they are like side by side. So really it is personal preference for what sort of covers you are after. But if you were to use one with stay dry or the micro fleece inside, you can just lay down boosters inside that. So you could get a trifold, pop that inside, pop that on your baby and that will last you quite a while. Um, the only thing is once this gets wet, you will need to wash this. Whereas with just the plain pool without any stay dry in it, if you were to put a terry square, terry flat on your baby and pop this over as a cover, or even if you had a fitted on your baby and you pop this over as a cover and it just started to get a little bit wet and you changed it, you don't need to wash this one straight away. You can actually just air this out somewhere um, or give it a rinse and just hang it up to dry. Um, so these don't need washing as frequently as these do because the pool is not going to get sopping wet. It's your elastics that you'll probably want to get clean. So if you know there's poo, obviously, you're gonna to have to wash that. That's not going to be reusable. Let's compare now to the fitted pattern that I used using both of these methods because I make my nighttime fitteds out of this pattern. I wanted to have covers that would fit over my fitteds nicely, that were the same shape. And so this one, as we said before, doesn't have the crotch rise snaps in there because this is a fold over to get a smaller fit, which I quite like. I don't like snapping those crotch rise snaps down. So this is on the smallest setting. And then obviously, the fitted pattern as a cover with Velcro and that folds down and I put the thing on the opposite side. And so that is that as a comparison. So let's just bring in again. Remember I said I would do the printed pull in the same method so that you could see the comparison of those. So let's pop those side by side now. So they are on the smaller settings. So they both have the stay dry layer in it. You could use these with boosters. Um, you could even turn them into pockets if you wanted to, which I will cover in another tutorial on how to turn these into pockets. It's quite simple. Um, but size wise, these are a lot smaller. So using the cover pattern, not the fitted pattern, will get you a smaller nappy if you're wanting something that you can use immediately. So as soon as baby's born and you're wanting a cover or you're wanting um, something you can lay your boosters in, these will be awesome and if I had my time over again I would probably make about 10 or 15 of these because I would have used these in high rotation with Reuben in those first few weeks when he didn't fit in any of the cloth nappies that I had made but now that he's close to six months and he's quite a lot bigger I would probably just use these ones because I know that they're actually going to last longer and so at their biggest setting I'll pop them on their biggest setting so let's just pretend we've got a toddler in these overnight over the top of a fitted. Like that's gonna fit really, really well over a toddler. 
So in the printed pool, I have done the fold over elastic method in both of the patterns. So obviously we've got the fitted pattern piece here and the traditional cover pattern piece here. Both with fold over elastic. This one has the crotch rise snaps in it and this one has the fold down snaps for different sizes. So size difference between them. Again, it's gonna be much the same to the turn and top stitch method that the one that's the fitted is going to be bigger than the one that is the traditional cover, purely because it is a smaller pattern. So there you go, you have those side by side. And again, I would recommend that you can use this one from newborn as well, as long as there's lots of stuffing in there, this will fit around a newborn nice and snug especially those leg elastics because that's what's quite bothersome with newborns with their little chicken legs so that's going to be nice and snug against the chicken legs whereas the fitted is quite big it's quite spacious so you would probably make these for a bigger baby which I will use on Reuben so I, I'm more likely to make a whole bunch of these the fitteds as covers as opposed to the traditional covers as covers well, that's all for today guys I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a few things I'd love to hear from you guys which methods speak to you which you would like to attempt and if you need any help don't be afraid to reach out and of course I'll leave a link for the patterns that I use in the description below along with a few suggestions for other patterns that you can use using these two methods so tell me in the comments below which one of these four nappies is your favorite and which one do you think that you might like to recreate yourself if you like this video today please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time